Hey guys, so uh, on today's video, I'm going to show you how we go from this to this. And uh, I don't know, however short I can make this video with still showing everything that I'm doing and hopefully not missing a whole lot of details. So do me a favor. You know, do me a favor since I'm editing this video at 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, filming my intro after I say goodbye because I committed to myself to post this in the morning. So uh, when this goes live, I might still be asleep prepping to start to head home. But uh, yeah, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, like the video, comment below, give me some feedback. Tell me that uh, everything here was a really dumb idea because that's my favorite. And uh, yeah, let's show you how I got here. Well, step one, got the frame tubes cut. So to make the holes easier, design this quick jig in the CN for the CNC. I'm gonna go cut that out right now. Jigs clamped to the table, box tube in, and now we don't have to cut these by hand. Making the jig, cutting it out on the table. It was probably faster to burn every single one of these holes than to drill two of them with a hole saw counting making the jig.
So all of these pieces have an inner and an outer and they get clamped together like this. Weld each of these assemblies first. My son came up to hang out and work in the shop and work on the tools with me, so uh, I've been welded in a couple of years since I had my shop, but I put him to work and he's getting the hang of it. And uh, yeah, I'm having a blast. Well, got them stacked on top of each other, clamped together, that piece is level to that piece, you can see it's pretty much perfect, so I'm going to take all these clamps over, flip this over onto the nice polished level smooth floor, and stitch up the other side before I start the top and bottom plates. So. We stood up the frame rail, got a couple of pieces of the big angle iron here clamped. Just clamped to there, tight to there, just to hold that true so we can start putting this top strap in. And we'll just uh, weld it on the end basically and uh, pull it over as we weld. And we'll pull it a little bit, weld it, pull it, weld it, and that way we don't have to form anything. It's just eight, so it pulls pretty easy.
I don't know why, but this kid loves to grind. So, I'm gonna let him. Well, would you look at that? Well, we got uh, two frame rails upside down, ready to go here. We're just uh, cleaning up the floor over here. We're gonna take them, lay them down on the side without the seam, because I'm putting the seam on the inside. And I gotta put a notch back here, a little pie cut. Bend them up four degrees so that uh, the back frame rails are parallel to each other and then from about that point forward the taper off like the drawing all the way to the front we can put them side by side make the cuts bend them up identical on the floor weld that fish plate it and then we can flip them upright and put some cross members in while it's on that nice level floor Well, I had to stop the video because my digital angle finder is actually on my phone. That's why these are side by side. They measure under 0.1 degree different from each other and measuring four and 4.1 degrees, which we wanted four, so I'm calling it a win. I'm gonna weld this up and then we can sit it upright, get a couple of cross members in it. Not done welding yet, but good enough it's structural, it's flat, it's level, it's parallel, and it is tiny. Yeah. Like, this is not a big car when you figure that back cross member is inside the roll pan, but that front cross member is pretty much the front of the grill, which is level with the front 
of the front tires. Well, we were uh, hammering away in the shop and an ad popped up on Facebook Marketplace for a motor and a trans and it fits my oddball wants and the budget is right because he only wants a case of beer for it. So I am off to pick up a 12 pack of Corona and go grab a drivetrain for this thing and then I can get back at the fab work. Well, a couple bucks in fuel and a 12 pack of Corona and we're back with the spoils. It is a 260 cube, 4.3 liter V8 out of a 75 Buick Apollo with, I'm told it's a Turbo 350 that I'm hoping to just adapt a stick to, but came with distributor, brand new alternator, power steering pump I don't really need, new-ish carb, new-ish fuel pump, it all looks like it's pretty good, and these BOP pattern trannies share the locating dowels and the lowest bolt holes right here with a Chevy V8 pattern so I can make a simple adapter on the plasma table and bolt a stick to the back of this and we're in business. So the plan was never to bring home a motor but I am now and uh, the jack on my cherry picker doesn't work so we need to mount it in the frame to get it out of the truck and well uh, I'm here so do some motor mounts Oh, this is weird. Kind of different, I guess. It only bolts up with those three bolts, which has stew studs, which go through the motor mounts. And then it had a clamshell mounted to the frame. And uh, that was the extent of what was holding it in. So I'm gonna go over to CAD and I'm gonna drop some new plates to replace that, that uh, have some tabs coming out, weld onto a bushing, and then I just need a couple of simple tabs off the frame. And this will be up there. So this is what I've come up with. Three bolts in line. Got a universal bushing tube in there. Kind of puts the uh, center of the motor mount right around engine center line and uh, should be pretty good and beefy and then I just need a couple of tabs off the frame sure makes life easy when the CNC plasma table is sitting right between or right across the room from the computer and your frame and motor so I'm gonna blast these out and get that motor in there engine meat frame and this thing fits in here just about as perfect as I could want expect well, these are just cooling down. It's uh, almost 11 o'clock at night. And uh, basically, I'm gonna let these cool. I'm gonna put some bushings in them. And uh, we're gonna mount them up to the side of the block, get some tabs on here. And we're gonna call this one good for today. And I get a little bit of WD-40 on them from pushing the bushings in, but my motor mounts are bolted to the block. A couple of tabs and this thing's ready to go into the truck. Well, it's late, but I got some tabs on the frame side. No more wood under there. It's mounted so that the frame is the lowest point. I think got three quarters of an inch of clearance under the oil pan. So when I drag it, at least I'm not ripping the oil pan off. Got lots of room for the headers here to uh, fender dump. Got room for a rad in front of the motor behind that cross member. I got it measured out according to my CAD drawing. If you haven't seen that, it's somewhere in the video listings here where I built this entire frame in CAD. Um, this is why I do that, because with any luck, when this goes in the truck tomorrow, and it goes home, I can 
put the car on top of it here on my frame table to keep everything level and uh, it will just fit now if you're paying attention you'll notice there's no transmission cross member and there's a piece of plywood under there right now that is because I am not intending to keep this transmission uh, my plan is still to put a 5 speed in this because I decided it needs a clutch pedal so I'll probably program out an adapter to go to a standard Chevy transmission instead of a BOP pattern one make it a little bit easier to get and uh, for now before we throw this in the truck I'll probably throw a temporary cross member underneath the trans just something to support the weight until uh, it makes the trek home but I'll do a video once I get it home and put the car on top of it but there it is and that's where we're gonna leave this out today it is uh, around 1 30 in the morning I'm trying to finish up some stuff so that I can take uh, the spoils of war home but uh, I don't have a cherry picker at home so well not one that works so the motor kind of needed to be mounted in the frame but uh, I've been sweating buckets I'm pretty sure I have heat stroke and wear uh, shirts even when it's hot out in your welding because I have a sunburn I'm going to regret for a very long time but uh, get a kick out of this video do me a favor subscribe to the channel like the video comment below this it's late I'm sure there's more I want to say I have no idea how long this video is but uh, there's a couple more videos coming from my time down here I'm gonna break them up into different projects and uh, yeah thanks for tuning in we'll catch you on the next one